Good morning. We are getting ready for the day. Oh, this is gonna be lunch today, and I want some eggs. Lovely. All right, so, still coming down from the, uh, the excitement that was yesterday with uh, Pete Wentz, that was crazy. And honestly, the show Fallout, which is technically what we're there for, also very cool. Today, I made a strategic decision that's gonna change up my content plans a little bit because today, basically, uh, I feel like I've been so busy trying to be like, I wanna be a Pokemon Go YouTuber, make Pokemon Go videos. I wanna own and run a company and do a lot of the administration, product acquisition, and management. I want to be a streamer for the company that I'm working, that I own, so that we, the, the company can generate revenue and build a customer base and I enjoy streaming. I want to be a Pokemon TCG YouTuber and make Pokemon card videos. It's all coming together and it's all a bit of a hodgepodge S show. So I, uh, today, today I'm out of Tupperware. Are we really out of Tupperware? What is happening to our Tupperware? Today I'm using a little thing of Tupperware. Today I basically need to make a Pokemon TCG video. I, I we have some ideas. I just have not been able to focus on creating Pokemon card content, like long form YouTube videos at all. And that's a problem, because obviously like we have a upload goal of once per week, um, which you know I think is a little ambitious considering everything that's going on, but like, I don't know, I like that, I'm in for that. So, I gotta make a Pokemon card video. Problem is, I don't know if I have time to make the Pokemon card video that I want. And then I realized, I'm lucky enough to live here in Los Angeles, where like an hour away from me uh, is one of the biggest weekly trade shows in the entire country, Frank and Sons, which has an insane amount of uh, vendors and Pokemon product and stuff like that. So I was like, wait a minute, I can just go to that, which does cut my day in half, so that kind of sucks. But the cool thing about that is the fact that at Frank and Sons, there's two videos that I can shoot. I can shoot one video where I basically complete the set of a scammer. I said somebody scammed me when I bought a big Pokemon card like mystery thing on eBay, go figure, you know, eBay scams, wow. Um, and they basically gave me like 75, 80, maybe even 90% of a Silver Tempest master set, except all of the best cards, all the alt arts, all the most expensive cards were obviously missing. So that's unfortunate. Um, so kind of got scammed on that. So I basically want to go to Frank and Sons and complete this scammer set. And then I realized, wait a minute, let's look at the YouTube channel and see what's been performing well. The like, I visited series where I visited a Pokemon card warehouse. I visited a Pokemon card collection. Things like that are doing really, really well. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to Frank and Sons today. Um, and I'm gonna leave my place at like 2.30 or leave the office at 2.30. Go to Frank and Sons, film a video where it's like I visited um, like uh, one of the best Pokemon card warehouses, something like that, and make another Pokemon card warehouse video because it is just a big warehouse filled with Pokemon cards and vendors and stuff. Um, so that's gonna be cool. So I'm doing that today, just decided, right now. Let's get to the office. Well, first let's make some eggs. I don't know if you can see it, but this pan is steaming. That is the oil on the pan, which means these eggs are about to fry. Yeah, that's gonna be impossible. Take it off the pan, cool. Unfortunately, don't have time. This is all I got, this is all I, this is all I have time for. Usually I don't have breakfast because in the mornings I'll have a protein shake. Like I'll go to the gym and have a protein shake. And today was supposed to be my first day back at the gym in like two weeks. And then I didn't want to go and then I didn't go. Which honestly, regrettable, regrettable. You know, should've just, should've just pushed myself out and gone. Make some toast as well, eggs and toast. Well listen, sometimes everyone experiences moments of weakness and then succumbs to them. I did, all right, I did. Sid went to the gym, because Sid is strong and responsible and hot. I did not go to the gym, because uh, I'm not. Didn't mean to rhyme there, but I don't know, dude. We went to bed at like 12.30. I, got, I was supposed to get up at four. I got up at five instead. I'm so dead, bro. And we have so much to do today, so. I'm gonna eat these eggs. I'm gonna nom these bad boys, and then we're gonna get into the office. Oh, all right, so we still have all of our products kind of sort of ready to go. I feel like I'm gonna have to break this down and organize this today. We are opening up so many Crimson Haze boxes, it's gonna be insane. 
New cards everywhere. Okay, so the game plan of the day right now. We need to upload the vlog, organize and prepare product and prepare today's whatnot stream, script today's and prepare today's Pokemon card video that I have to go out and shoot, which I'm still debating on which one to do. Either the like completing a scammer's collection or actually, you know what? That's a good question. Over here, we have all of the binders. Uh, including the one that I should have gotten scammed on. These are like master sets that I've tried to work on. Darkness of Blaze. This one feels em empty. Shining Fates. That's awesome. It might be this one. No. Uh, oh, there's so many of them. Okay, so let's look through. Oh, maybe it was this one. Wait, Bramble Gas. No, this looks, this is, this is Scarlet and Violet. I don't know what the heck this is. What is this? This is a G.I. Joe. It'd be funny if this was it was this one, because it's G.I. Joe, not that. Shining Grapes? Wait, this is crazy, look at this. This is my Shining Fates uh, master set so far as it stands. What am I missing? Okay, I'm missing probably some... No, here's all the baby shinies. I'm missing a full art, some baby shinies, a uh, lot of baby shinies, oh my god. And then some of the big ones. Yeah, definitely some of the big ones. Oh, I got a lot of these. Wow, a lot of the full arts. Oh, and then these are all my duplicates. Or, and all, I guess, my trade trade bait. Sick. Okay, wow, not bad there. What is this? This is... Empty. Okay. Oh, this is Darkness Ablaze. Oh, cool. Okay, so this is my Darkness Ablaze set got both the charizards the v and the v max actually and this i think is the first charizard card i have ever pulled in my life and i think it's this literally exact card uh darkness of blaze is where i pulled my first charizard it was the v max and i think it was this exact one so darkness of blaze though i have a lot to go on the master set this is not nearly completed i feel like i stopped collecting um darkness of blaze kind of quickly looks like i have to complete a lot of these sets it's one of these days Okay, so there's that. There's Darkness Blaze. This, I think, is the 25th. Oh, no, this is XY Evolutions. Oh, cool. Charmeleon, the Mega Charizard EX, cool. We got a lot of these guys. Wow. This is fun. Okay. Do we have any of the, like, the Secret Rares or anything? Oh, yeah, look at that. Wow. Cool. We have some of the Full Art EXs and the Secret Rares. Sick. Dang, if I remember correctly, this binder was... Not one of these white Ultra Pose. This is Vivid Voltage. This is Champion's Path. Wow, Shining Legends. Oh my god. What's in my Shining Legends binder? Ooh! Okay, just a Shining Mew hanging out like that. All right, that's cool. Um, let's see, the GX is Shining Mew right there. Cool. Shining Rayquaza, Shining Arceus. Oh, let's get it, dude. And then the Mewtwo GX, the full art. No, not the test tube. Oh my god, and then all the Shining Ho's from the ETBs that I've opened up. More Shining Mew, <laughs> Mewtwo GX. Oh, that's sick, okay, cool, put that back away. Oh, this is, this is it, bro. This is called the Vineyard, because it's Hidden Fates, or as I called it, Hidden Grapes. The Vineyard Grapes, you know, get it? Okay, inside the Vineyard, I always keep the books. Uh, we got our Charizard GX. We got this page nearly done. We got the Mewtwo GX. This page nearly done. This one's gonna be so far from completed. Charmander, Charmeleon, beautiful. Okay, here's the baby shiny. So we got the rainbows, we got all the full arts, which is nice. And we're definitely gonna have some gaps in the shinies. There is a lot, but we have a ton. I have a ton of these. Cool, shinies, all the full art shinies, obviously very hard to get and very hard to find. Maybe we complete this set one of these days. I do have the Umbreon though, big Umbreon, that's huge. What else do we have? The ho and the Reshiram, both big. Glaceon's big, we got Lucario, Greninja, this is sick, dude, Altaria, oh cool, I have a lot of these ones as well, like the Tapus, the Golds, these two Golds, and I think these are all, oh no, this is all part of the Master Set as well, um, and then this is all duplicates that I have, so we got all the Energies, I have all, the, or, you know, three rows of the, um, the Tins, and then Duplicate Big Shinies, Duplicate Little Shinies, I have so many of them, more Shinies, a lot of Full Arts, uh, Rainbow Rares, Birds, these are just GXs that I got a bunch of extra of, Charizard GXs, a lot of Charizards, these are from Tins that I've opened up, oh my gosh, we have more, more Baby Shinies, wow, this is crazy, cool, wow, that's awesome. And then, all the way back here, oh, I've got this zipped up binder, you know what, this might actually be it, this might actually be it, let's see, oh, I think this is it, dude, right? Cause it's a it's a pretty much master set. What I forget 
this is 2022. I forget what the Silver Tempest logo is. This might Radiant to Serena, Reshiram V. Is this Silver Tempest, dude? Okay, if we see Lugia's, it's Silver Tempest. Okay, so what are we missing from this? We're missing this one right here. We're missing this one up here. This here. Um, wait, unknown. This is Silver Tempest, right? We've got these two we're missing. Missing another one here. Yeah, dude, I bought this on eBay, and it was like this big... I don't know, I forgot what the listing was. I, the, if I have an old video, Radiant Jirachi, nice. Some pages, some missing from here, some missing from here. If this is the thing I'm thinking about, I bought this off of eBay, and I bought it for kind of a lot, and I think it was, yeah, Lugia V and V-Star, this is Silver Tempest. Oh my god, we found the binder! We found the binder! I can make the video now. Amazing. Um, basically, the story is, I bought this on eBay, I think it was like a mystery collection or something, or it was like an eBay mystery thing, and basically, they, they I, I, call, I consider it scammed, and the editor, Reese, who knows a lot as well about Pokemon, considers it scammed. I, I think I got scammed by this guy on eBay, or at least got a really terrible deal, bad enough for me to use the word scam. Um, because I bought this whole thing, and then when you get to the last couple of pages, you got the full arts, and then in here, you've got all of the alt arts, okay? Alt art unknown V, alt art stun scun tank V, alt art Reggie Drago V, except the alt art Lugia V, the biggest hit in the set, was left out. And then obviously there's like uh, a bunch of rainbow rares that are not in as well, and then here are the gold cards, which there is the Lugia V star gold card, but this is the set. And obviously, there's kind of a lot to complete, so I don't know if I'm going to end up doing this video today, because it seems like a pretty, like, it, it might take me a couple days to do this, but um, we got it. Found the scam binder. Amazing. Okay, so doing a couple things around the office right now. And today, I swear to God, is my last, like, lazy day. I only woke up at, like, 5.30 today. I got out of the house at, like, 6, 7, 37. Last lazy day, last recovery day. Tomorrow we're back in it. But right now, I just set up this new stream setup right here for TikTok today. Trying to display our uh, our vintage booster packs and then just kind of like make it look cool. So there's that. Made my matcha for the morning. Oh dear God. Okay, let's put all of this up there. Watch this. Ready? Yeah. Okay, well those all just... I had a nice big tower of that and they all fell down. But we've got over here all of our Crimson Haze. Restocked. This is great. We just we got a hundred boxes of these. It's honestly isn't enough. It's just all we could kind of afford to buy of like one set. So, hundred boxes. I fully expect these to all be gone in the next like two days. So this is great. Oh, also, um, we're gonna we're gonna start restocking mysticgrips.com with some products too. So if you guys are ever looking to like buy Pokemon card stuff and you don't want to go to whatnot or TikTok like these other platforms, and you want to just buy some straight sealed boxes off of like a more normal website. Our website, mysticgrips.com, we're going to stock. So, we got that. Uh, and we have all of this here, our Crimson Haze, which is great. And then the big stuff, it's the Mononoke Kyoto Takashi Murakami packs. I, I cannot believe we have access to these in the quantity that we do. There was only 50,000 of these packs ever created. And they were made for the uh, Kyoto exhibit that happened happened in Kyoto. Takashi Murakami did a thing there. Um and they were released there. So you, the only way to get these are basically from Japan. You can only buy them in Japan. They were only released, again, 50,000 packs of them. And we still haven't pulled... There's, like, secret rares that you can pull from here, and we haven't pulled those yet. Murakami, I mean, I don't know if you saw... I don't know if I vlogged it, if you saw my... Uh, what Sid got me for Christmas. But we got each other art, and uh, I got a Murakami piece from her, which was amazing. And Murakami is one of my favorite artists ever. I have two pieces personally from him that I bought myself and have had in my collection. And then Sid bought me another one as well that we have to hang up in the house still. So I'll show it off eventually, it is insane. But this is, uh, he made a trading card game. So these are his trading cards. So we've got like 2000 of these packs. We literally we literally bought like a, a very commanding percentage of the total circulating supply of this thing. Um, so we got a lot of them. This was a huge investment for us. Um, we bought like 250 of them and they sold out in less than a day. So I was just like, Frick it! People love this. These are super unique. Takashi Murakami is one of the greatest contemporary artists of our generation. Definitely one of the most influential. Uh, I love his art. The freaking flowers and the colorfulness of it. And the, mm, it's like right up my alley. And he made his own trading cards. And we're a trading card company. This is a very obvious, like, if we're going to take a big risk on something, it is an established, super established artist who is Japanese, who, who 
has his trading card that is exclusive in Japan. Obviously, we do a lot of Japanese trading card sales, um, all for Pokemon. But, well, actually, Pokemon, uh, One Piece, Dragon Ball. We've sold kind of kind of a lot of different Japanese, but we do a lot of Japanese sales. Um, so, Murakami, Japanese packs, it's like a no-brainer. So, we went super, super heavy on these Murakami packs. Um, so, if you want to help us recoup our investment, <laughs> mysticgrips.com, we're going to stock these on there too. Um, and the really interesting thing with these packs that I'm very excited about uh, is the marketing around them. I'm basically going to be testing a lot of e-commerce style marketing with these packs specifically just because I know they sell really well, but we bought so many of them. Um, so, we'll sell them all out, I'm sure, within the next like couple of weeks. A week or two would be great. We, we could probably do that just normally, but I'm going to put a lot of fuel behind a lot of, uh, a lot of marketing pieces. So if you want to kind of like watch this go down, um, keep an eye on our TikTok, I think is where we're going to end up doing most of it. I have like four, uh, TikTok video ideas that I'm going to make, um, around these Murakami packs. And I'm going to make a couple different styles of content. And I think I'm shooting all those today. I'm going to try to, um, where we're going to have just a straight opening. We're going to have an informational TikTok talking about Takashi Murakami and then these packs and like why they're so important or why they're so, um, like cool, like who, who Murakami is and the fact that he made trading cards and he's selling them. Um, and then I think one of the other ones as well is just talking about the trading cards specifically, like what these are. And, um, you know, they're made in Japan. These are Japanese exclusive, only 50,000 ever made, so on and so forth. Secret rares that you can pull inside. Um, and then we might have another one too, another short go out, but basically testing a couple of different content ideas that I know do well on TikTok for sales. Um, so really putting like my, uh, combining my content brain and then my e-commerce brain, which is a new side of my brain that I'm building out, um, to try to sell these packs. So really curious to see how that does. Not only because like, I'm curious to see how a non-Pokemon TCG does for us in bulk, but I'm also curious to see... Um, how good I think I maybe am at e-commerce and e-commerce sales. Uh, it's definitely like a newer, I did, I've done YouTube my entire life and YouTube videos. So e-commerce is very new to me. So, but I've studied a lot. I've looked into it a lot and tried to teach myself a lot of it. So we'll see. Um, but we got that. So that's super duper cool. Uh, and then today we have another, so this right here, this right here is probably like 37,000 dollars in stuff. Uh, here is probably over $37,000 and stuff. Maybe for, like closer to maybe around $40,000 and stuff. So we have that. Um, and then obviously we have like these boxes that we just got. Um, these ones, which we've opened up a ton of them. Both XY Roaring Skies we opened up. We opened up two XY Evolutions and uh, one of the Primal Clashes. So this is kind of like all we have left for sealed. Kind of goes to show how quickly things move in our office, which is really cool. Um, and we have a couple of other restocks hitting today. We have more Japanese. We've got Unigaba packs. We bought 100 of them, which is not enough. So we're restocking those today. Um, and then our English distributor hits today as well. So we are going to have well over $50,000 in TCG product in office that got here in the last like two days, which is really exciting because we've been very low inventory. So it's nice to like have some stuff back. Um, and we definitely need it. And we're going to have to put another probably twenty, thirty thousand dollar order in for stuff this week as well. Because basically, you know, we bring all the stuff in, we sell it all very quickly, take all that cash and use all of it to buy more product. And then basically we're just stacking, buy a bunch of product, sell it at our margins. We have that little profit margin. We use that to like pay for employees and pay for rent and then acquire more product. And we just kind of scale up from there. Um, and we've actually recently figured out, this is stressful. We've recently figured out our operating costs um, and our profitability. And basically, I, I guess I'll share this number in order to be profitable. We need to do around, like we need to do around $200,000 in sales per month, um, to be profitable, uh, with our current infrastructure and employee list and rent payments, um, and general operating costs for like top loaders and sleeves and equipment and shipping stuff. So, we're now in the business of problem solving that, and that's my, that is my uh, uh, domain to have to figure out. Um, basically, how do we bring our, this is every business, right? We scaled super quickly to grow really fast to get us to a place to where we can do, you know, millions of dollars of years or millions of dollars of revenue in year two of the business. Year one, we did a million. Year two, we Conservatively, we think we can do at least 2.5, but we'd like to do 5 million year two. We'll have to see. We'd have to really scale fast for that to happen. So I don't want to like scale too fast and break the business because that's also a thing. But we scaled up really, really quickly. 
Um, and we have some like expenses that we're still paying that we don't need to be paying anymore. That's really killing us. So we're like getting those gone. We're, we're clearing those out this month, which is nice. Um, and yeah, now we're in a place where we scale up super fast. We spent a lot of money setting this office up, like a lot of money on this office, a little bit more than I would have liked. Um, and now we have to kind of reset financially as a company to where we can start building back our cash reserves, paying down some debt, um, and then just kind of like building up our inventory and scaling back up. So we had a lot of cash going into 2024. We do not have a lot of cash anymore. Um, and we have pretty high expenses and we have a really, really nice office. Like, obviously it's nice because the building's nice, but like the equipment that we have set up is nice. The rooms, the soundproofing, um, the wiring for everything. Again, the setup on here was very expensive. Even our shipping thing was expensive. That was like thousands. This all was very expensive. So spent a lot of money getting here and we're here and we have a pretty expensive business to, with, uh, you know, employees and stuff. I've never done this before. I've never done this before. So now I have to figure out, and this is the first time I'm doing this ever in my life. I have to figure out, okay, we need to make $200,000 a month to start like seeing profit at our average profit margins, which I think we're higher. We're actually higher. We have higher profit margins because a lot of our margins are very staggered across products. Um, but now it's my job to figure out, okay, how do we bring that $200,000 down to 150,000 to where we only have to do $150,000 in a month, uh, in order to, um, touch profit. Cause I think that's, we can, you know, we can easily do 200 to $250,000 a month in revenue from now on, from this point, I completely 100% think that. Um, but to do that though, we need to grind, which requires me streaming a lot more. So if you've no, if you notice me really focusing streaming, uh, it's cause right now we, we need to get live. We need to be selling. We need to be community building. We need to be uh, customer building right now is really important for sales because the business sort of depends on sales, <laughs> you know? So yeah, it's everything going on in my head right now. Um, and honestly, we'll probably end up breaking this next week. Uh, this is a sealed case of Evolving Skies. I don't know if you can see that. Evolving Skies right now is going absolutely parabolic in the market. Um, we bought this for a couple thousand bucks, and I think a sealed case is now going for five to six thousand dollars. So I, I like we could double our money on this case right here. Is basically probably where we're at with it, at least with where we're, where we can sell it. Um, so we're, we're not going to seal this, like, like sell the whole case sealed. Although I think a case of evolving skies is a very cool premium thing to have as a collector, especially as an investor, like not investment advice, but if you're an investor and you want to invest in modern, um, sealed cases is probably the best way to go. Um, so we have one, we've been sitting on it because it's like, it's ours and we want to hold on to it. But the problem is, is that like, I don't know, right now is the time to sell things. And right now it's the time to generate revenue. And right now is, is the time to scale the company up. So I think it's about time to break this. So if you're interested in any like case fresh evolving skies, what we're probably gonna end up doing is distributing three booster boxes to TikTok and three booster boxes to whatnot. TikTok will do breaks with them. Whatnot will do breaks with them. Um, and then we'll kind of just like liquidate this box probably on the same day. So, or the case. So we'll see. I don't know. I got to figure that out. But yeah, right now we're grinding and we're really focusing and... That's everything happening in Mystic Rips. I will show all of the rest of the product that comes in. Because again, $50,000 in Pokemon product is kind of cool to see. Um, and yeah, right here is what the hell's going on here. Okay. All right. Back to work. Boom. Nice. We just got these in right here, which is like 100 uh, Unigaba booster packs. This is something that we also cannot keep in stock. I cannot find these and buy these fast enough. <laughs> They're so hard to keep in. So we've got Unigaba back, which will probably sell out today, but we'll see. All right, now I'm shooting some promotional content for the Murakami packs, which is great. Getting the whatnot stream set up, and then I've got to basically break down uh, like 30, technically 29 boxes of Crimson Haze. And then we got to start the stream, and then I got to stream fast, and then I got to go, because I have like an hour drive today to freaking the... the... Doing too much today. <laughs> okay, and now basically I need to cut all of these boxes, which is 29 boxes, and rip all of the booster packs out of them in three minutes, so I'm not late to stream, which I'm already late to that I, I, don't know, I wanted to start earlier. Uh, so we're gonna try to do this. 
basically i'm trying to do way too much today i'm trying to shoot pretty much a full pokemon go video a full pokemon tcg video do a stream record a bunch of short form content organize the office prepare product all in the same day so that's just honestly too many things at once but it's fine we brought jake in we brought jake jake's here for support all right so now we got two people me and jake jake Yo. i feel like you haven't talked to the vlog much how's your day going how's your life been it's been chaotic but good you don't sound convincing i'm trying to make sure that everything is ready for today and it's not but I guess that's a question for you. I talk I always in the vlogs talk about like, okay, okay, come on. Like what I'm doing in the day and like what's going on. What are you up to today, Jake? Basically like closing down streams from yesterday, making sure that inventory reflects. Um, I'm working with one of the platforms to help solve a potential like big issue and kind of hole that was found um, by me and our team. Um, so that we can protect not only our shop, but other sellers. Um, and that's just turned into a lot more like research than planned. Um, and then just making sure that like things are paid for with the office. Uh, I do have to take care of some like expense things for the office. Um, and then yesterday was a, a big like resupply day um so we have a lot coming in today we got samples from a potential supplier for like sleeves and top loaders so we want to test out like quality today um and so just kind of testing that and then if i have time helping with shipping and making sure that like Corey and I stayed until 9.30, 9.45 last night and caught up on all the shows. So today we should be like fully caught up. Um, today we're also getting the PC set up for the stream station and getting that mounted and docked and everything so that Corey will have his own computer and everything too to um, like look at the products and orders and stuff like that too so you know something doesn't match or something goes wrong or he needs to double check something he has like a full system to do that instead of uh me having to do it every time which i still can but it's just easy for him to have that access so we're gonna get that set up today too we've just been waiting to like get caught up on shipping sick there's a lot of like back end kind of admin work um, yeah jake pretty much does all the back end kind of admin work <laughs> For Mystic Rips, so we're we, we're very appreciative of that. I right, we are out of space. Want to grab another thing? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna finish doing this, and then I gotta go live. Okay, so pause on this uh, absolute mess that's going on because Jake has huge news. Wait, Jake, tell the vlog. Um, not yet. I need time to like figure this out and process. Like, I'm not in excitement mode. I'm in. Well, then, can I, I tell the vlog? To do. Yeah, you can tell the vlog. Okay, Jake has stuff to do, uh, he just got approved for his new apartment. So he's moving out of what was my old place, now is his old place, and he's moving into a new unit, which is closer to the office and awesome. So, huge congrats to Jake, he's, he's uh, moving into his own spot, that's so great. And now, we've got these boxes. This is our English distro hitting. So we've got more Pokemon product in today, yes. <sighs> okay, heading out, honestly, not in a great headspace, leaving at a, well, as you can imagine, had a call with my accountant, um, and that was uh, stressful. So the the business, sorry, there was a really stupid situation going on in the parking lot here, and there's people walking in the middle of the street like it's not a street. You can tell the mood I'm in, probably. This is the stressful part about running a business and, and owning a business. Like if you if you want a good career and you know, you're fulfilled at work and you know, you're, you're, you got, you get paid and you can pay your living expenses and you know, like life's maybe a little bit stressful, but it's, you know, it's good and it's working. Don't start a company. Don't start a company. It's a bad idea. It is so stressful owning a business, bro. And, and I've always worked for myself, but I've never owned my own business. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't consider Mystic 7 
owning my own business. It is in a way, obviously, because like I'm working for myself. I'm uh, managing, you know, expenses, and I run every aspect of the business. And like, you know, I pay an editor, so like I kind of have, have an employee, sort of. So like, it, it's kind of like it, but it's nothing like this. Nothing like what Mystic Rips is with employees and expenses and profit, like cr like crazy profit margins. It's a lot, man. So trying to figure out how exactly to make sure this company stays afloat has been one hell of a of a task and I've again I've never had this before so got some good news got some bad news about kind of like our financial position um, our expenses and you know we're, we've got ideas and we've got strategies going forward we're gonna be fine like everything's fine it's just really freaking stressful man and just also like it's funny, like we re also like reviewed the numbers of like my own personal investment because I funded Rips by myself. Um, like the the numbers of like my personal investment in the company, um, along with the company's overall profit and loss. And man, we're trying our hardest, you know. We're doing good. We're trying our hardest, but damn, is it stressful? And we are we are working it. And my God, I am. I have a lot of stress. So. Whew, I feel like I need a breath. Right now, I, I'm like late. I left the office late. I didn't get everything done that I needed to get done. I'm late to go home. Sid and I were gonna get together and record for a Pokemon Go video. Um, basically just doing raid hour today for Kartana because it's like the last raid hour for Kartana and I'm filming a shiny transfer challenge and it's a great legendary. I want to go out and shoot for Pokemon Go because the Pokemon Go channel really needs time and attention. But yet again, it is going to suffer at the hands of the Rips project, which is intentional and I just got him stressed bro and just like, today didn't end like how I wanted to um and you know now it's six I try to be off at home with Sid at six and you know we try to stop working and like eat dinner and hang out by 6 30 and like I feel bad because like I'm like delaying us and like this is leaking into my relationship personally and like Jesus freaking Christ man you know that's uh that's how I'm feeling so Again, like, I don't know, like, it kind of, like, making it all sound doom and gloom, it's not all doom and gloom. We have, like, Rips is fine, like, we have cash, we have a lot of product, we have good strategies, we have things that are working, like, we are, we are doing what we do, and we're doing it pretty well. We just need, basically, basically, we just need to be doing a lot better, um, without raising our expenses much, and that's gonna be the trick. So, we're trying to figure that out, but we'll see how it goes. So, wish me luck. Um, I'll vlog with Sid and we'll end the night out, but man, I am Steve Rest. Oh, 16 minutes. Okay. <laughs> hey. Hi. Goodbye. <laughs> Why? I said goodbye. Okay. Oh, I thought you were following. So I'm home now and life's a lot better and I'll show you why. I'll never get used to that thing turning around. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what are we making? We're making some pasta. Ooh, with some turkey bacon. With some turkey bacon. Nice. Although some I peas. will admit, it, it'll definitely be a lot better with, or it would be a lot better with like pancetta or something, but I don't need pancetta, so. This looks great. Thank you. We got that. We got some bubbly water and some pasta. We've got a Simba Dimba. Simba Dimba! Who will not be served. Oh! Simba Dimba! Oh, 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 he jumped up oh. for it. That was awesome. Good job, dude. Leave a like, and then we got a chester who's leaving. Cheep, cheep. And then we got a sink that I'm gonna clean after I upload these files. Oh, you. oh cheese. All right, cheese, say goodbye to the vlog. You're the outro. Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow.